Hello, welcome to the first ever gameplay video on this channel. Today we are playing a game called Root. If you haven't seen that tutorial yet, make sure you check that out first before you watch this video. And yeah, let's get started. you but I'm excited for this first solo run through but first I want to show you a quick setup for the bots in the game before we dive into actual gameplay so let's do that first now aside from using the clockwork expansion for the bots I'm also going to be playing as the underground duchies which is part of the brand new expansion from the Kickstarter last year for root and I'll also be playing against the mechanical marquees so first off victory point marker of course is going to go at zero I already put runes on the map along with the items up top I draw Three cards. I don't think the Yu-Gi-Oh! references will ever stop on this channel. Sorry. Now the abilities for the Underground Duchies, I'll explain as we play, but let's go ahead and set them up first. Brand new. Oh my God. So two of these warriors go in the clearing completely opposite from the other corner where the keep is going to be. So since I'm playing against the Marquis, I know I'm going to put their keep right here in the top left corner. So I'll put mine in the bottom right corner. So these are pretty much tokens, just like how the Marquis have wood. For this one, one tunnel goes in the same clearing as the two warriors that we put earlier. And then two warriors are going to go into the clearings all adjacent to the corner clearing. Two here, two here, and two here. And then on my player board, there's a slot here called Unswayed Ministers. I'm going to take the nine minister cards and then put that face up in that slot. The duchies version of buildings are also citadels and markets. So I'm going to put those in their corresponding spots on the player board. And then on the player board, we also have nine spots for crowns. So we're going to go ahead and put a crown in each of those slots. Who doesn't love a brand new set of shiny meeples? And then now we set up the bot. So we're playing against the Marquis de Cat, which is different from the Riverfolk expansion. Pretty much the exact same setup that we talked about in the last video. So again, make sure you watch that video first before continuing on with this gameplay if you're not familiar with Root already. And then I also realized that in the Kickstarter version of Root that I have, there are these resin clearing markers. Brand new. Now with the bots, you also have these 12 black priority markers. So we're going to put them on the maps accordingly. So these priority markers are set depending on which map you play on. Since I'm playing on the base game, the fall map, it's gonna be set this way. And then we can also pick a difficulty. So the cards listed are easy, challenging, and nightmare. If you wanna play without any of these cards, then of course that is the default mode. So technically there are four modes. Which one to play with? Only weenies play easy, so we're definitely not playing with that one. Then again, we're not adventurous enough to play with nightmare mode, so you're right. Nightmare mode it is. Now there are also four trade cards that you can pick from. You can pick between zero through four. We'll just go with one for now. So I'll just pick a random one, which will be Iron Will. Now from the deck, we're also gonna be taking out the four dominance cards. From there, I just shuffle and then randomly draw three. Now for the setup, the bot doesn't draw any cards. Now the last thing I wanna mention before diving into gameplay is some rule adjustments uh, concerning bots. There are a bunch of them, but I just wanna mention the most important ones. And then if the rest come up during gameplay, I'll mention those too. But if you are planning to dive into your own solo gameplay, make sure you read those explicitly before you start. Number one, for crafting, bots don't activate the crafting pieces. So like for the Marquise, they don't activate the workshops and they do craft any item as long as the item is listed up top. So if there aren't any more items, then those bots do not craft them. Number two, when it does craft an item, it's going to be one victory point no matter what, even if it lists like two to three victory points, it's always going to score one victory point regardless of what it says. And number three, bots cannot craft persistent cards. Number four, when you are battling a bot, they remove the tokens first before the building. So it makes it that much harder to get rid of them. Now if the bot does have multiple types of buildings that it can remove during battle, it picks one randomly to remove. Finally, let's dive into gameplay. Bird song for Marquise, they're going to reveal an order card. First card they draw is Mouse in a Sack. So they're automatically going to craft that card, which means Marquise de Cat moves up to one point. They create or craft a bag that's going to go in the crafted items box on the player board, and then that card gets discarded. Next, they're going to battle in each mouse clearing. So the only one they battle in is in clearing seven. So let's go ahead and roll for that. Three, of course. Two of my guys go back. Zero damage for the kitty cat. What a great start. Next up, they're going to recruit. Now for recruit, that's when their trait and their 
difficulty level comes into play. So for Nightmare, whenever they recruit, they're also going to place two more warriors in the highest priority. All right, so now let's go ahead and recruit for them first. Four warriors evenly among the ordered clearings that they rule. Three, four. One warrior goes to each mouse clearing. And then, since we are playing in nightmare mode, that's when the difficulty level kicks in. Whenever they recruit, they also place two warriors in the highest priority for the mouse. Two more goes over here. Bam, half their army is now on the board. Next, they're going to build in the region with the most Marquise warriors, which will be the region that we just added to. Now, since it is a mouse, they're going to build a recruiter right here. Now, it's going to move all but three warriors, and the only clearing that it can move from there is actually in clearing two. So you can move this to the region adjacent to the region with the most enemy warriors. In this case, their enemy, being me, is between six and three. So those I'm even in, but three will take priority. So it's gonna move over here, I think. No expansion occurs because it did build a building. And then now we move on to evening phase. They score victory points, which will be one for the ordered buildings. And then another one because we're playing in nightmare mode. So that's two more victory points. One and two. My turn. So since I'm playing with the underground duchies, they have something called a burrow. Now for the burrow, it's adjacent to every tunnel that they make. And on top of that, only I can enter the burrow and I will always rule it. So one warrior goes there for my bird song. Daylight, I'm gonna go ahead and recruit. So another warrior goes in the burrow. The three cards that I start with are birdie bindle crossbow and code breakers so two mouse and one bird i don't rule any mouse clearings yet but i'm gonna go ahead and actually use my bird card right away so i'm gonna reveal my bird card which means i can build in any region that i rule currently so i'm gonna go ahead and build in my rabbit clearing right now which means i take a citadel actually i want to build up my resources first so i'm gonna go ahead and build up a market there And then I don't have any suede ministers yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal my last two cards, which are the mouse cards. And then I get to pick one of the ministers. So in this case, I have a choice between three ministers since I revealed two cards, which are all squires. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the formal. So since I swayed a minister, I'm gonna take one of the crowns from my player board and then put it right there, which means he is swayed and also score one victory point. That's it, moving on to my evening phase. I'm gonna discard my bird cards since I revealed that. My other two revealed cards go back to me. I'm not gonna craft this turn. Then I'm gonna draw one card plus one for each revealed card that I have. So that means two cards. I draw the Woodland Runners, another bird card, and Travel Gear, another mouse. Round two, back to Marquis de Cats. They are going to reveal and they draw the Cobbler. This doesn't get crafted because it is a persistent card, but then now they move on to battle. They're gonna battle in every rabbit region. I own that one. No one's here, no one's here. No battle occurs. Now I'm moving on to recruit. Again, they recruit four more warriors in every rabbit clearing, so that they have at least. One, two, and three. Highest priority goes to clearing four. They're gonna build in the region with the most Marquise warriors, but they are tied. But two again takes priority and since they drew a rabbit card, that means they're going to build a workshop. So workshop goes here. No movement occurs because every clearing that they have is at three max. Nightmare mode kicks in. So now they take two more warriors and put in the ordered clearing of the highest priority. Their ordered clearing is rabbit, which means four, 10 and five, it's gonna go here. Now they're going to build in the rabbit clearing with highest priority. Again, it will be again in four. So they're going to build a workshop there. Now movement occurs in region four. This is going to now go to region seven because three is my region of highest priority. I'm assuming they can move multiple clearings at once because it just says move to the adjacent region. So I'm gonna go with that. And then again, they score one victory point for the ordered clearing, which in this case was number one for the workshop. And again, they score for nightmare mode. So that's two more victory points for them. My turn. Birdsong, one warrior goes into the burrow. Daylight phase, I am going to reveal one mouse card, which will be Codebreakers. Daylight, I would like to dig. 
So I'm going to discard this mouse card in order for me to dig in this region, which means I take all my warriors from the burrow, put it in region nine along with a tunnel, also in region nine. And then I would like to build Citadel in order to replenish the warriors that I already use. So I'm gonna go ahead and build one Citadel also in region nine. I can, or I can battle and then reveal. I can't take an action of my Suede Minister, but I'm not going to yet since I already used it on build, which was, might have already been a mistake. Going strong. I want to sway some bigger ministers this turn, so now I'm going to reveal the last three cards that I have in order for me to get yet another Suede Minister, this time a Noble instead of a Squire. Ooh, this one is like a Doppelganger card. So I'm gonna go ahead and sway the Mayor which lets me take the action of any Suede Noble or Squire. So I think that'll come in handy later. Taking yet another crown to put on the Noble and I score two victory points back to back. Evening phase, since I revealed my bird card yet again, that gets discarded. These two mouse cards come back to me. Since I rule clearing three, I'm gonna go ahead and discard travel gear because in order for me to craft, I of course have to spend a rabbit. But in turn, I get a boot and also will score one more victory point. Just one behind. They're going to reveal an order card and they draw, the bot draws a rabbit. Better burrow bank. That doesn't get crafted because it is yet again a persistent card, but now they're going to battle in every ordered clearing. No one is there yet, no one being me. Then they're going to recruit the remaining wards that they have in the rabbit clearing. So they have four, 10 and five. Now it does say to distribute it evenly. It doesn't say go to the lowest clearings. It says go to the clearings with the highest priority. So I'm gonna put one at four and then one at five. And then it's going to build in clearing seven. Since it's a rabbit, it's also gonna build yet another workshop right here. And then it's going to move, but this time for movement, I have the most pieces in clearing nine. Now since four is now the highest priority, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of seven, actually two on seven, and move that to four. Nightmare mode doesn't kick in because all their warriors are gone. They don't expand and now they moved on to evening phase where they score victory points. Four workshops, they get two more points. And then one more point for Nightmare. Back to me, one warrior to burrow. I also get one more warrior since I built a citadel. So now I get two warriors in the burrow, also for birdsong. I need to start scoring some more victory points here. Um, I draw two more cards at the end of my evening phase. Definitely need to build again. So I am gonna build in six, another market. We got a lot of cats and nine and if they start to battle me and I start to lose buildings, that's gonna be bad. So let's go ahead and take out nine by starting a battle. Battle begins. I roll. Two and two. So of course I lose two, but he also loses two as well. And then I move on to my ministers. Reveal a card to place a building in any clearing I rule for my formal. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal my mouse ambush card. Can't use my suede minister actions this turn because every slot that I have on the clearing that I rule is full, but I do have three yet again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reveal three cards in order for me to sway this noble, the Brigadier, another crown goes on top. I score two more points. I feel like I'm slowly but surely treading along. Evening phase, discard, craft, can't do, but I can draw one, two, three more cards. I just now have to discard one. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard my ambush card since you can't ambush bots. And the cards I drew were Sappers, Scouting Party, and Smuggler's Trail. Bird, mouse, and rabbit. So in total, here is my current hand. Bots round five, I already lost count. Welcome to the very first time bots have drawn a bird card, which means that they now get amplified. They can't grab this item, it's a persistent card, but now the bot moves on to escalated daylight. So how escalated daylight works is that first, they're going to battle on every single clearing every single clearing. Let's just go in order. So no there, yes here. Battling first in clearing six. 
three and zero. Oh my god. So all this goes out, including my market, which means I actually lose a minister. We'll just keep going for now. We'll do that at the end of this because just in case they take out any more buildings, it's any number of buildings that they destroy, I will end up losing one minister for this turn. In the meantime, six is done. Two, I have no one there. No one here, 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 here. Actually, that's it. Not bad. That is it for the battle phase. Recruit, they're going to recruit two warriors in each of the two clearings they rule of lowest priority. So now actually, well, they only have two warriors left, but the lowest priority that they have seems to be in 12. It's gonna go there. So cats, the final two cats again are gonna go there. For building, they're going to build the type with the most pieces on the map in a clearing they rule with the most Marquis warrior. So I think there was one instance of this earlier, but we're gonna fix it now. Now technically in Escalade Daylight, it will build in clearing four. Problem with that is that there are no open slots there with the most Marquis warriors. The next priority would be a clearing with four, mark with three, four, five, six, would be five. Now the next clearing would be a tie between five, two, and seven, since they all have three, actually and 12, since they all have three warriors. But then we're gonna go to the one with highest priority, which will be two. So now it's gonna build here in two, and it's going to build a workshop. And then back to movement. So for movement, all the three wars from each clearing to the adjacent clearing with the most enemy pieces. Okay, so now not only are they going to move, they're going to also battle in every region that they move into. Everything has three. This one is only one above three and it's already adjacent to nine. So it's good from there. Moving on to evening, they're now going to score. Now, since the bot scored a bird card, it's going to actually score in the victory point track with the most points. In this case, it's the workshop which will score three more points, one, two, and three. Okay, and then right before it goes to my turn, um, I lose a minister because one of my buildings went back to my board. Unfortunately for me, I lose the minister of highest rank, which means I lose one of my nobles because my building was returned. And I'm gonna go ahead and return, I'm actually gonna return the brigadier. So one crown is permanently removed from the game. And then my noble returns back to the unswayed minister's pile. Now, my turn. One warrior plus one warrior per you showing, so I'm gonna have two wars total. Go to the burrow. And then daylight, I take up the two actions. So now I think it's time to. I'm definitely gonna save up some cards so I can start scoring. So in total, the duchies have three tunnels. My goal is to put all tunnels on the board so I can start scoring victory points consecutively each round. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig in another clearing. I need to start getting rid of its buildings, its workshops in particular. So I'm gonna go for seven. So I'm gonna dig, put four of my warriors in clearing seven. And then I also put my final token also on there. And then I'm gonna battle. One, two, three, four versus three. Ever watched Dungeon Dice Masters? Three. So all these warriors die. And then none of mine die, finally, for once. What a flip and roll. So that's done. Say goodbye to that. And then, those are my two actions. And then take an action to each Swayed Minister once. If I reveal Scouting Party as my mouse card, I still have four cards left, which means I can place the building in a mouse clearing that I rule, which will also be in seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and take back, actually I'm gonna go ahead and put a citadel there and then go ahead and reveal four, my remaining four cards. So I can take the best of the best. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Duchess of Mud. So this one lets me score two victory points if all tunnels are on the map, every turn. So hopefully that builds up for now. And then I go ahead and take a crown to place on the Lord. And I score three victory points. Again, still trailing behind the cats. Next, discard a bird card. So since I revealed that bird card, it gets discarded. Now these three return back to my hand. Now I can craft. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna draw two cards, which means I could technically 
Yet another noble. So do I have enough to spend a card? I think so. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend Smuggler's Trail, which means I get a bag. Not that it really matters, but <laughs> I also score one victory point. Okay, and then draw two cards. One card normally, and then another card for the market bonus. One, two. Ooh, Protection Racket, this is a good one. So here I score three victory points back right away. So this is this would be good for my next turn. Only thing is I did want to get another Lord, but I definitely want to get the Earl of Stone. Actually, it would work out because I can get the Earl of Stone after I build my last Citadel. So I score even more victory points. So cats, I'm coming for you. Coming for you. Moving on. They draw Favor of the Mice, Mouse card. So this card doesn't do anything for them, but it is a mouse order card this turn. So they're gonna battle in all mouse clearings. They got no warriors there, so no battling for them this turn. Recruit four warriors among the order clearings that they rule. So now they're gonna recruit in the mouse clearings. Um, the only ones that they rule in this case would be 211 and, actually just two and 11. So, Two is going to go into the clearing of highest priority, one to 11. Then they're going to build in two. They can't build in four, can't build in two. So now it's a tie between 12 and 11. Of course, 11 is now going to take precedence. So they did a mouse, which means they build a recruiter here. Then they're going to move all the three other warriors to actually closer to seven so four is going to go here two is going to go here no expansion they score victory points which will be two points and onto my turn bird song i get one warrior for the base and then i get one two three more for citadels i need to take over a rabbit clearing now, since all my tunnels are on the board, the exception to this is that if I want to dig again, which I actually do, I just need to remove one tunnel first. So I'm going to go ahead and take a tunnel away from nine. Because so that way I can dig in clearing 10. So tunnel goes there. My four warriors go there. So that's my dig action. And then I'm going to battle. No. Okay. Only two warriors get attacked. One of mine. I lose. I wanted to take over this one, but now I can't. Actually, that's fine because now I rule the clearing, so that's okay. As long as I rule that rabbit clearing, because now I have two rabbit clearings over. Now I can score that fox card that I was talking about earlier. Now I can reveal cards. So, why not? I think I'll take back my brigadier. So, one more crown. I score two victory points for the noble. Now I can take an action of my suede minister. Two points of all tunnels are on the map which they are. So I gain two big points, finally surpassing the cats. Nowhere for me to build just yet. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and reveal three of my cards. So now I can take back the Brigadier, score the crown. Now I get two more points, finally taking a bigger lead. Moving on to my evening phase, I discard the bird card since I revealed it. Other three cards return back to my hand. And then now I can craft. So I'm going to go ahead and craft the fox card that I had earlier. So for this one, I have to have, I have to rule two rabbit clearings, which I do. Um, the two rabbit clearings that I own. Since I rule 10 and 3, I can craft this, take a coin, and yet score three more points. One, two, and three. Yes. Finally, making some traction here. I think I'm starting to. I think I'm starting to understand the traction behind. I feel like they're completely opposite to the cats because they they're like building up the resources slowly for them all to come together in the end. But then the cats are constantly spreading out throughout the battle. So if I just make the groups of duchies come out in a uh, very calculated manner, it should be okay. Man, all this thinking makes me uh, super dehydrated. It doesn't hurt to have a little water break. Monday. Birdsong for the Marquise de Cats. They draw a fox card and it is a persistent card. So 
So again, they do not craft. Battling in every fox region. One, two, three, four. No point because I'm not there, which works out. They're going to recruit these two in. So they're going to get one for clearing one and for clearing six. Then they're going to build in, it seems like. And since it was a fox, they do a sawmill. Move towards 10. Actually, they're going to move towards 7 again. 11 is already adjacent. 12 is already adjacent. So that's it for their movement. They're not expanding because they did build. And then they score victory points. So one point for the sawmill that they built at the fox location. And of course, discard the card. My turn. One warrior on the burrow. Two, three more for the citadels. An army of seven are ready to go, which means I should probably dig and then battle. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of my tunnels at, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and remove seven and then dig in, let's see. I wanna keep targeting their workshops. I'm gonna go ahead and dig in two. So seven of my guys go here. Dice. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven versus three. Oh my God. Zero and three, which means all his warriors are dead. And none of mine are. Maybe that isn't a good thing because his warriors keep being constantly recruited to other locations. Oh well. So those are my two moves and then suede. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal Rabbit and mouse in order to sway the captain. Captain allows me to initiate a battle and then I get yet another crown to place on here, scoring one more victory point at 20. 10 points to go. And then I get to go through my swayed ministers. So, oh wait, this tunnel's supposed to go here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Lord's effect. Score two points if all tunnels are on the map, which they are as per usual. So it's two more points for me. I'm not at 21. And then I can take up to two moves or initiate up to two battles. I think I'm just going to battle back to back. Battle again in clearing two. Three and two. So these are gone and they go back there. Second battle is going to be here in clearing seven. Bam. Actually, I don't even need to roll because defenseless. Anyways, that goes back as well. Next action is going to be for... I think I'm going to go ahead and take the foremost action by revealing mouse. My mouse card, which is the crossbow. So since I revealed that card, I can now build in clearing number two. I would like to build. So I'm going to go ahead and build a market this time. So I get some more resources. So my mayor allows me to double up, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the Brigadier's action one more time and battle in clearing number nine. Of course, I don't know why I keep rolling, but <laughs> just the act of rolling makes it fun. Okay, so that one's done, and then I can still move. Uh, I want to move, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take five of my warriors and put it here in clearing six. Okay. Only have one card to reveal, so no ministers to sway this turn. And then re return my revealed card back to my hand. Craft. I can craft with a fox clearing. Oh, I don't have a fox clearing. Oh, I do now. So I rule this location, which means I can discard this card and score one more point. And also gain a crossbow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw one plus my two bonus cards for the market. So one, two, and three. Two bird cards and one mouse. So now my hand is currently the cobbler, code breakers, crossbow, and armors. Two birds, one mouse, one rabbit. From there, it is back to the bot's turn. Back to the bots, they reveal a bird card, Escalated Daylight Time. So, okay, this is gonna be fun. Can't craft it, moving on to Escalated Daylight, they're going to battle in every single clearing. Let's start from here. So in clearing six, they roll two and one. Go warrior goes back to my warriors. 
go back here next clearing oh that's it then they're going to recruit two warriors in two clearings of lowest priority which means two goes to 12 and two goes to 11. oh also didn't realize that they also scored a victory point last turn for nightmare mode and again they don't have any more warriors to rule for nightmare and iron will so there goes that now they went to build in 12 but they can't wait three six seven eight three four five six seven so then now they're going to build in 11 and the one that scores the most points which will be between sama and workshop but sama will get priority movement stays the same and then now they score two victory points for the sawmill which is now at two points so one and two they're now at 17 and of course that's it for their turn moving on to birdsong for my turn one warrior goes to the burrow since I have four cards, I actually want to reveal these so I can use my minister next turn. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and build in clearing number nine. Oh, I can't reveal. I need like four cards to score points for that. I'm just going to build. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to build my mouse location. So I'm going to reveal one mouse card and then build in clearing number nine. I'm going to build a market. So I can grab three cards in total now. So now all my markets are now on the board. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one by battling. Don't need to roll because they are defenseless. So this will go back. And those are my two actions. And then going on to my suede ministers. Score two points for the Duchess of Mud. Almost at 30. I'm gonna use the four mole this time by revealing a one bird card in order for me to build in this location. So I'm going to build my final Citadel here and I'm going to go ahead and just battle in this one. So ooh, go ahead and just battle in clearing number six by taking his action, the Brigadier's action. So two and three, two of my guys go back. One cat goes back and I can still move. So I'm just going to move two. clearing eight nothing to reveal i'm not going to reveal any because i'm going to save up again for four so i can get a lord for the minister and then i discard my bird cards all the cards return to my hand i'm going to craft using a fox so i don't have a fox clearing which means i can't craft i don't have a building here for fox so i can't craft the crossbow like i wanted okay nothing to craft then go ahead and draw one card plus three cards for all these that I have open. So one, two, and three. Ooh, two points, two points. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and discard so I have down to five. I'm gonna discard discard my mouse card. And now my current hand, two rabbits, one fox, one mouse, and one fox. I probably wanna score these two clearings next. So I definitely gotta work on some more fox clearings. Next, their bird song, reveal. The Command Warren. So again, I'm getting pretty lucky with them because they haven't been crafting anything. So nothing to craft, straight to battle, and every rabbit clearing that they have. Boom, and boom. Okay, so no battles there, but now they can recruit. They only have one warrior to recruit. So this one's gonna go between four and five. They have, so four is gonna get higher priority. So. One cat goes there. They're not going to build. Initially, it would be 12, but that's full. 11 is full. The next place with the most Marquise Warriors would be four. Again, that's also full. So they're going to build, I think, in clearing number five. And it was rabbit, so they're gonna build a workshop here. Moving to the place with most pieces. Now, I kind of have a tie between 10 and three for most pieces. But in terms of priority, it's going to be three. So I'm assuming that they're going to move here to clearing seven. So all but three, which means everything here is going to go to seven. And same with 11, also going to go here. They don't start a battle, only for Escalated Daylight. I mean, according to the player board, those stay there. I also have to move four for them, has to go to an adjacent spot. So that would, if three is highest priority, they can also move to six, but between six and seven. 
Do I split? This is all. So I'm assuming they all just go to seven. No expansion because they built a workshop, but they do score one victory point for that workshop that was built. And they also score a victory point for nightmare mode. If I can just finish this before they catch up, I feel like they're gonna start gaining traction back soon. Time to make my move. One warrior to the burrow. And then I get additional wars for every citadel that I've opened. So one, two, three, four, five more warriors, aka the rest of my board goes onto the burrow, which means I would like to dig. This probably has absolutely nothing to do with me scoring victory points, but just because I have an entire army of warriors now, I'm gonna attack clearing seven. Sounds like a good idea. Nine warriors versus 10. I roll two and zero. So two of his warriors are gone. I made that way more dramatic than it should have been. What's new? So those are my two actions, dig, battle, then swayed minister. So again, two more points, almost there to 30. Two more moves or battles, initiate two more battles. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna straight up battle here. Why not? Battle twice from the Brigadier. So three more cats go to the bank. Two of mine go back. Bank. What is this, Monopoly? Three and two again. Three cats back. Two of mine go back. That was Brigadier's action. I have five cards now. I do want to save one for gaining another Lord, but, but I can still use one. Actually, there's no point because I already have enough building. So let's move forward. I have two Lords. I have the Baron of Dirt and the Earl of Stone, which will score me the same amount of points. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the Earl of Stone card. So this one allows me to score one victory point for each Citadel on the map. Once I can activate him by revealing these four cards. I'm gonna keep my Fox card so I can score two more victory points, which means the next turn, it's game over. One crown goes to the Earl of Stone. I get three victory points. One, two, three. Let me pull it up so you can see. So close. One more point, one more turn, it's game over. So that was one victory point. There's no other way I can get a victory point right now. Are you serious? Yes, there is. Actually, it is game over right now because now, I discard any revealed bird cards, which means I discard this card. And then bam, reveal these cards back to my hand, and now I can craft using citadels and markets. I... No, my god, it's not over, wait. I don't have two fox clearing, so I can't use it. Oh, wait. Rabbit mouse clearing. If I have a mouse clearing... Here. Yes, actually, it is game over. Mouse clearing right here, which means I can activate this mouse clearing, discard that, gain a flipping teapot, my last item, not that items matter because no vagabonds here. And then lastly, score two victory points and that, my friends, is game. So, that was the first gameplay video on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you had a fun time following along with the underground duchies and the Marquise Mechanical Marquise. Are gameplay videos something that you still want to see? Let me know and I will continue doing them. I actually had a lot of fun doing this one in particular. It's fun to fun to stimulate your creative mind and see how I can do a different take on tabletop gaming. I want to hear all your feedback down in the comments below. I would like to, of course, get a better way of doing overhead shots, but right now it's kind of hard to get a clean overhead shot. So right now I'm doing it angled from a tripod and of course mixing it up with uh, my side camera, but hopefully one day I can get a nice clean overhead shot. So we'll take care of that. That way you can see everything that I'm playing with the entire time. But anyways, thanks for supporting the channel. Of course, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this so we can push the boundaries even further in the tabletop gaming, photography, videography world. Until next time, see y'all later.